Hey everybody, good morning. This is All The Things, back with another book review, and today we're gonna talk about this book. One of the best books I've read in a while, and it is Coddling of the American Mind by Greg Lukanoff and Jonathan Haidt. So, I've been making more book reviews. If you guys like these book reviews, please give me a thumbs up because I got more books to review and I think uh, kind of gives you an idea of what the books are about and hopefully maybe you can start a conversation or whatever. But uh, please like if you like these reviews, please uh, subscribe, wherever that button is. But um, on to the book. So, this book, The Coddling of the American Mind, there's a lot of stuff in this book and uh, basically to kind of give like a very high level kind of summary of what the book is, it is about this phenomenon that the two authors that wrote this book are coming to that they wrote a paper or they wrote an article in The Atlantic um, about it and it became so kind of important or prevalent or popular that they decided to turn that uh, article into a book. And this idea is that people in the United States, because this is the coddling of the American mind, um, in particular, are falling into certain ways of thinking or believing certain ideals that are harmful in the long run rather than helpful, even though in the immediate, in the right now, it seems like it could be helpful. And they go into these things called the great untruths, and they unpack why uh, certain people may think that these things they call the untruths are good, but when you look at it long term, or um, the effects that it has on the institutions and the communities and the uh, individuals that, that believe and play out these untruths, how it doesn't really help anybody in the long run from the perspective of this book. And I would have to say I agree with a lot of the things that this book is saying. Uh, to give you an example, this doesn't spoil the book, so uh, one of the great untruths is uh, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you weaker. And um, they they juxtapose this with like the the good truths, where if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger is the truth they're trying to get to. And the, the untruth we're believing is if it doesn't kill you, it makes you weaker. Where if you go through something really traumatic or hard or whatnot, on the untruth side, they're saying that there's this idea where we should protect you from that so you never have to deal with it again. We should kind of create this safe space to eliminate that sort of trauma from you because you've been through enough. And in real life, uh, you can't put like, you know, like in, when you're bowling and you put those lanes up on the side so you don't get gutter balls. Like you can't do that in real life. And so if you try to do that like in high school or in college or while you're raising a kid, you put up those lines, those, those rails, and then real life, those rails come down, you're setting the person up for failure. They're gonna get gutter balls way more often than they normally would because they always practice with those rails. And as opposed to uh, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, not necessarily we're trying to put you in situations to kill you, but if you get into a struggle, if you get into a hardship, if something is hard for you and it, you have to work through it, that's like doing push-ups. Like push-ups are hard, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do them because push-ups make you stronger. I'm not saying everybody needs to have strong arms, but that's kind of the idea. So this book goes into some untruths. What I really, really like about this book is it gives a lot of real-world examples. It says, during this year, at this college, this happened, and here was the reaction. It's an example of this untruth, and here's what unfolded that we think is problematic goes through many examples of many different places and different situations and then to go even further it doesn't even just say this is an untruth this is bad here's some examples here's what's better it says here's something that i think is problematic here's some examples of it in real life um and then it says here's where i think it came from let's look at it and understand it because it's real whatever it is it's happening good or bad, it's really happening, and I can't just say, it's bad, stop doing that. That's like telling a smoker, like, that's bad, stop doing that. And it's really hard for them to, like, get off smoking, just like, oh yeah, you said it's bad, so I'll stop doing that. Um, when you when you seek to understand, when you seek to see the other side's story, I think that helps a lot in solving the problem. People feel heard, 
they're more likely to communicate, and it opens up a discussion where we can work through this together. And I think this book sets up the people that read it uh, for a conversation rather than the right people and the wrong people. So uh, it goes through these six reasons why... Six, one, two, three, four, six. Um, it's... A, this phenomenon exists, and part of it is parenting, the different uh, ways of parenting. Um, part of it is um, like social media and the internet, and it's not saying one thing is bad and this we should never do this, but there are certain risks to doing things a certain way, and um, let's bring them up. Let's talk about them and really understand what we're setting ourselves up for when we are indulging in certain practices. So. Um, this book, The Coddling of the American Mind, it's about addressing a real-world uh, phenomenon that these authors see that I, um, I agree with that's happening, and it's that um, we're making people more fragile um, by protecting them. Where uh, It gives an example of peanut allergies, where it says uh, this is a real thing, where some people are very allergic to peanuts or nuts and they can like go into shock and their throats can close up and it can kill them. And so um, a lot of schools have banned peanuts, like elementary schools and stuff, because some people are allergic to nuts. And um, there are certain studies that show that in places where peanuts are banned, uh, more people than usual are allergic to peanuts. And uh, the idea behind that is like, you need exposure to something to gain a tolerance to it. And in certain cases, like with this peanut thing, since you're taking away the exposure to the peanuts, you're saying, no peanuts, we can't have peanuts. Then more people become allergic to it because they're not exposed to it. And this book kind of has that idea where we're making people weaker by taking away situations that are not so comfortable to deal with, or ideas that are not so comfortable to deal with. If we only give you stuff you're comfortable with, you will not grow as much and it'll be much harder for you to deal with real world situations that are not manicured to make it okay for you like those rails in the um in the bowling uh, lane so it's got a lot of good ideas got a lot of good discussion points and it kind of puts some dots together in my head where some things like when i experience stuff in real life or sometimes i'm confused as why the way I communicate or the conversations I have with certain people go certain ways. Um, I was like, oh, maybe this is this is contributing to some of the difficulty with uh, sharing ideas or people accepting ideas or rejecting ideas and becoming angry just because you had a different idea. I always think everybody should be able to think whatever they want. You don't necessarily uh, get an access pass to do whatever you want, but you can have whatever thought you have in your mind, and it doesn't bother me, but I've met people that um, can be very bothered by other people just having certain thoughts in their head. And um, I think this book speaks to that kind of idea, and it, it, it helped me like do some thought exercises and stuff, so I really like this book. Um, it is a book that has graphs in it, so technically it has pictures, so that's always a plus in my book. Um, but uh, I recommend you read it. I recommend you, this is like a book club book, I think. This is the kind of thing you read with other people and you talk about it and you chop it up because this is something that I think is happening. Um, and if you are concerned about um, people becoming more polarized in their ideas, people not having conversations like they should have, and not saying like there's a right way to have a conversation, but like talking and listening and not saying, you're wrong, here's what I think. No, you're wrong, here's what I think. No, you're wrong, back, forth, back, forth. It's like, oh, I understand what you're thinking. Can you explain more? Oh, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Is this what you're saying? Can you validate whether or not this is, I'm on point? Oh, I hear what you're saying, and I disagree for these reasons, but it's still okay for you to think something different than me. T -t Having conversations more like that. And um, I think this book really outlines a lot of those type of uh, things. So the book is, let me get it back up here, The Coddling of the American Mind. It comes on audiobook if you're an audiobook type of person. And it's like 300 pages. I also have it on um, Kindle, so it's ebook too. But um, this is a good book. I recommend it. And yeah, I mean, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, if you have similar books to this. I think this is a really interesting concept or 
within that realm of conversation, let me know in the comments. Uh, but this has been All the Things with another book review. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.